Okay. So 2.3 is the second to last section we're going to do. So tomorrow we'll do the last one. That's Wednesday. Thursday we'll uh, review or you guys can just work on your packets together. And then Friday will be the first exam. Um, okay. So the definition for what homogeneous means is if a function t, or let's say f, sorry, a function f has the property that f of tx ty equals t to the n times f of xy for some real number n. And then we say that F is a homogeneous function of degree N. For some N, uh, which is a real number. For example, if you have f of x, y equal to 3x squared minus 5xy plus y squared, and we want to test whether or not this is homogeneous, you can replace x with tx and replace y with ty, compute the function, so that would be 3 times the quantity tx squared minus 5 times tx times ty plus quantity ty squared. Um, and now each term, first, second, and last, has a t squared in common. So if you pull out t squared, you will be left with 3x squared minus 5xy plus y squared, which is exactly t squared times the original function f of x, y. So we would say that this is a homogeneous function of degree 4. Um, not, not four, sorry, two. <clears throat> it's pretty easy to determine <clears throat> um, whether a function is homogeneous or not. Really, it just means that each term is the same degree. So even when you were in algebra, you would consider this first term as having degree 2. This second term, you would add the exponents. So that would also be a degree 2 term, as would the last one. So as long as you see that, then we say it's homogeneous with degree 2. Um, if f of x, y is... <coughs> homogeneous of degree n, you can also write uh, f of x, y as x to the n times the function f of 1 and then y over x, or we could also pull out a y to the n, which would then make this 
x over y, and 1 is our variables. So essentially what we've done is made this part here uh, degree 0. So if we pull out an x to the n or y to the n, we've made it just now a homogeneous equation with no degree. <coughs> so for the preceding example, um, if I take the original equation, uh, f of xy equals 3x squared minus 5xy plus y squared, let me just write that again. I could take out an x squared from every term, which would then leave just a 3 from the first term. And then here it would be 5 times y over x, so that we still get an x if I were to multiply this back out. Plus, this would just be y squared over x squared, which is essentially the quantity y over x squared. So this becomes x squared times f of 1 y over x. And you could also have done it with y squared. Okay? <clears throat> All right. So that's, that's what homogeneous looks like and how to work with them. We're going to go ahead now and actually solve a differential equation or two, and then we should be in good shape for the section. <clears throat> okay, so here's the definition for it. A differential equation of the form m of xy dx plus n of xy dy equals zero. is homogeneous if both coefficients m and n are homogeneous functions Attention all ESL students you are scheduled to test this morning during Black B Please check the rosters that are posted in the front and back foyers for your assigned testing rooms and report to testing at the beginning of Block B. All ESL students, check the rosters at the front or back foyer for your assigned testing rooms and report there at the beginning of Block B. <coughs> okay. Um, so anyway... If you have a differential equation written in the form some function times dx plus another function times dy, if both of these functions are homogeneous of the same degree, then we say that it's a homogeneous differential equation. And the claim is, we'll prove it, a substitution um, y equals ux or, well actually either one of them will work, but We'll clarify which one to use when. Or x equals vy will reduce the differential equation into a separable equation. Okay, so what we're going to take is the seemingly new differential equation, do a little bit of manipulation. And then all of a sudden, oh, look, it's separable. We know how to do those. So we'll solve it from there. So here's the proof for it. Is it long? Uh, about that long. I will fit it all on this last picture. Okay. So let's start with the... 
differential equation at hand. So this is given to us. And let's take y equals ux. So if y equals ux, then dy, using the product rule, would be u dx plus x du. And now what we're going to do is replace... So u is a coefficient. u is a co the coefficient of x, yes. So then one dy just be u? Well, it could be a, another function that we don't know about. We're treating it as a variable, so it's not necessarily a constant. <clears throat> okay, so if we go ahead and replace uh, the differential equation with these substitutions, now we get m of x comma, not y, but ux dx plus n of x comma ux, and now dy will be u dx plus x du. And now, since M and N are homogeneous, so that was the assumption, is that we're working with the fact that these coefficients are homogeneous to start. So since these are homogeneous, if we take out, so I'll write it out, if we can divide by x to the n, so that now we get x to the n, and then what would this function be in terms of then? 1 and u, good. Oh, forgot the m, sorry, let me rewrite that. Do the same thing here. So you take out x to the n, and then we have n of 1 u, and then we still have u dx plus x du equals 0. And now what I'm going to do is group all the dx terms together. So the dx terms would be Actually, hold on, I'm going slightly out of order. First, I'm going to factor out an x to the n. Now we're actually going to divide by x to the n so that these are no longer there. And then if we factor out the dx from the two dx terms, we'd have m of 1u plus n of 1 u times u dx plus, and now I'll group the du terms together, so that would just be uh, n of 1 u times x du. I factored, so there's two terms, well, three terms, really, if you distribute the function n, right? This term has a dx to it, and so does this term here. So all I've done is factored out the dx from those two terms. And then there's only one term with a du in it. That would be n times x du, okay? And now the claim is that this is separable because this coefficient here is entirely in terms of what? entirely in terms of u, dx, and then this coefficient, well, 
it's not entirely in terms of x, but you can divide. So instead of writing all this stuff, what I'm going to do is essentially divide the equation by the coefficients that are misplaced. Does that make sense? So if I divide by this coefficient and by this coefficient, actually, no, that's going to stay where it is. Divide by x. So these are the two things I'm going to divide by. Let me put that in blue. So if I divide by these two things, then the equation becomes what? <laughs> dx over x plus n of 1u over this giant function that we had here, m of 1u plus, let's write it as u first, and then n of 1u, du equals 0. And now this has been separated. This is a separable differential equation at that point. So if you integrated the equation, here you would have natural log of x, here, I don't know what this turns into. It depends on what substitutions we made. <clears throat> but this is now in terms of just u so that you could actually integrate it. Okay? Any questions on the procedure? Um, what did you do from the, I don't know, those, okay, the first step right there? No, 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 not there, like, the x, we crossed out the x, the x yeah. from there to the next step. From here to here? Yeah. I divided, or I factored out dx from the two terms that have a dx. So this term has a dx, and then okay. this term, if you multiply it out, n times u, n times u, and then m. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. And then that's just, this is just the other term that's left over. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> Question? Nicole? Um, where'd you get the x to the um, I proved to you earlier that if it that's why we did this that's a good question if it's a homogeneous equation of degree n that you're always able to factor out does that make sense I mean and we kind of did this example here it's like well this is degree 2 so here I took out x to the second you can do it even if it doesn't make sense to but in this case for the little proof it, it, it does make sense because you don't want that common degree in there, which and with an example, I think you'll see the procedure is the same exact steps that we did for the proof. So all you really have to remember is what substitution to make, factor out the dx's and the du's, or the dy's and the du's, and then separate them, and you should be good to go. Ready? Is there something that you like divided or combined to get that final step? Here? Like, I see what you did. You I did divided that. both equate, um, I divided this long equation oh. by this and by that. So if I divide the equation by this coefficient, on this term it goes away, but then on this term I have to divide by it, right? And if I divide the whole equation by x, it cancels on this term, but then I have to divide this term by it. Sorry, I was trying to not write out a ton of stuff. You wanted to, like, promise to... <laughs> yes, because I said on this page, and there it is. Any other questions? Okay. So, let's do an actual problem. Let's say we have x squared plus y squared dx plus x squared minus xy dy <coughs> equal to zero. Okay, so at this point, you only have two types of differential equations that we're dealing with. It's either separable or homogeneous, or maybe both. In this case, this coefficient is degree 2, as is this one. Okay, so because it's homogeneous, we can do the substitution. y equals ux, just like we did for the proof. So then dy would be... 
well, yeah, x squared, y squared, x squared, and then this is a linear times a linear, so it's technically quadratic. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so then dy was u dx plus x du. And now we're going to go ahead and replace the y's with u and x. So we get x squared plus u squared x squared dx plus x squared minus x times ux. x times ux will become ux squared. And then we have u dx plus x du equals zero. Do you guys see what we're going to divide by here? If we divide everything by x squared, what do we get now? One plus u. Squared, thank you. dx plus 1 minus u. Mm-hmm. I don't know what you were thinking, but I'm glad you answered it. <laughs> so now let's go ahead and group some stuff together here. Uh, with the dx's, we're going to have 1 plus u squared. And then we're also going to have plus u times 1 minus u. Do you guys see where I'm getting that from? This dx has a 1 plus u squared coefficient. And then this times this is u times 1 minus u. That's the other dx term. So I've just taken out the dx. So what's left now? x times 1 minus u du. Let's simplify the coefficients as much as we can now. So uh, this will become, let's see, 1 plus u squared plus u minus u squared. So 1 plus u. What would you say, Carl? No, I can't. Were you saying 2? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, plus, this is good. Okay, so we've taken this homogeneous equation, we've done our substitution, we've divided by x squared, we've combined the dx terms and the du terms. Now what? Divide by, divide by 1 plus u and divide by x. So then we get dx over x plus 1 minus u over 1 plus u. You could either put the du on top or just leave it like this. So now we've separated the equation. That was the hard part. Now I've got to solve it, right? How, well, this part's easy to integrate. How do I integrate this? Uh, substitute back. Substitute, uh, eventually, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and solve this now because it's easier to integrate with just u as opposed to having another. Split up the fraction as? Uh, 1 over 1 plus u minus u over 1 plus u. So the first part is easy to integrate. Then I don't know about the second part. Yeah. That's the problem, is the second part, right? What about some long, what were you saying? Okay. Yeah. Uh, why did you like multiply by one over the x times one plus u? Like, why did you multiply the one minus u as well? Because one minus u, we want to keep together with the du term. You want to have the equation be separated into x's on one term and y, uh, u's on the other term, so that you can actually integrate. 
because if the variables are mixed up and you integrate this, you can integrate fine. That you can integrate fine. But if you have x's and u's and you try integrating, then you can't do it. Okay. Here's what I was going to suggest. If we take 1 plus u and divide it into, let me write this as negative u plus 1. Maybe it helps to write this as u plus 1. u goes into negative u, negative 1 times. Does this look familiar? Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah, nope. If you multiply the divisor by the quotient here, you get negative u minus 1. So then the u's cancel out, and then you get Carl. <laughs> Two. Two. <laughs> okay, so let me rewrite what we have. So we have dx over x plus this coefficient now becomes negative 1 plus remainder, which is 2 over divisor, which is u plus 1. Does that make sense? Yeah. Ready? Okay. Because you're going to have to explain this to Wade later, probably. Oh, no, he's awake. <laughs> All right, now we integrate. dx over x equals, if we integrate the whole equation, natural log of x. Now we res uh, integrate this term with respect to u, so we get minus u. Integral of 0. That'll be our constant. Let's group the logs together. And I'll move the u to the other side. So it'll be natural log of x times u plus 1 squared. And then since you're adding, you can make it condense into one log. I've moved this u over to the other side. If you hate logs, I'm sorry. We're going to be dealing with them for about the next month. So. Awesome. Okay. I will exponentiate both sides. <clears throat> so that now we get x times u plus 1 squared equals, let's do c1, a new constant, e to the u. What's c1? e to the c. Okay. Let's replace u with, let's see, going all the way back, what is u? Y over x. U is y over x. So now we go back. So we have x times the quantity y over x plus 1 squared equals c1 e to the y over x. I suppose, depending on how uh, manipulative you're feeling, you could either leave it like this, or if you wanted to clean it up, I think the book tends to do this. They get a common denominator in here. So they put it all over x. And then move the x over. over x squared, so c1, whoops, x, e to the y over x. What? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm missing something. 
this. <laughs> so that becomes. Yeah. This shouldn't be there anymore. I think that's what I did. Hold on. Let's backtrack again. This becomes just this squared, that squared, right? So then it just becomes over x. So then it's just this. That's what I meant to do. So they don't have a fraction. They still have this one, but... Look, here's the thing that's going to happen. You guys might be doing your homework and doing this very long problem. You get your answer, and then you look in the back of the book, and you're going to go, oh, it's not what I have. It could be still correct, though, because there's lots of different variations of problem at hand, so don't feel like you've done it wrong. Because hey. we just plug into arbitrary yeah, like, in homework, it's like all wrong, values you know? for y and x and check gets Yeah, I mean, you, you could go through that length if you wanted to. I would just hope that it's right. I mean, it should be good. Okay, um, some tips, and then I'll give you an IVP to try. In general. So, Mr. G, like, if we get points off in the homework, we argue and say that we you told us to think that it was right. <laughs> you have to get it right. Okay, don't hope that it's right. Ask questions, and if you're not sure, then I could figure it out for you. But you guys are all very bright students. I'm sure you can manipulate your answer. Hmm, is this answer the same as this? Let's find out. That's what I would expect you to do. <laughs> okay, in general, here's my advice. Y equals UX is the way to go. So use Y equals UX when N is nicer. Like less complicated is what I'm saying. N is the co like more terms and stuff like that. So if you see a coefficient just x squared, and then another coefficient that's like, you know, xy minus y squared plus x, you know, that would be more complicated because it's longer. And I would say to use x equals vy when it's the first one. M, that's nicer. Now, truth of the matter is, a lot of times they look pretty much the same and it really doesn't matter how you do it. However, you might reach a point where you, you've separated the equation and then you realize you can't integrate one of them because you don't know the integral for it. If that ever happens, then unfortunately you're going to have to go back and then do the other substitution and then figure it out that way. Okay. Yeah, how, how many problems are there on this one? 25. No, not I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I don't think this. Just I guess I'll just this um, Actually, here. I'll just let you guys do this last one. Let's not make it an IVP. Let's just work with one more example. You guys know what IVP are, or IVPs are at this point. So. This is long, right? Um, I don't know. Long is a relative term, really. That's a lot. They're not all, like, some of them are, what's the degree of this equation? I think. I think. I'm pretty sure. See? That was nice. If I ate of these, Hey, we're doing two right now in, like, 15 minutes, that's reasonable. <laughs> okay, try this example on your own. And that's if we know exactly what he does. Um, I would argue. I would argue that the first one is seemingly nicer because it's one term only as opposed to two. So my advice is to try the substitution x equals vy, and then follow the procedure. See, the nice thing about this is that 
unlike Calc 3, where you have to analyze and see pictures and do all these different things, once you've learned how to solve homogeneous equations, it's the same process every time. Now, yes, you might see some integrals that you have to think about, but... Yeah. Nothing horrible. I heard that. <laughs> so he's going to check back the top bottom two and then Yeah. I mean, eventually you just have to remember homogeneous. I either do y equals ux or x equals vy. Substitute it in and go. I mean, once you do two of these or three, then you'll, you'll know exactly what to do each time. If anybody's confident and wants to go on YouTube, you guys can come up and show us what you did. You want to come up and try it? I'll just. Yeah, natural logs out of there. Yeah. Catherine, you got it. Question. Yeah. Um, I 
two B cubed. Yeah. Over, yeah. And then natural one. Yeah. yeah. All right. Substitution. That's, uh, what is, if you take this and treat it as like U. Oh. And then DU would be partially the numerator. All right, maybe I'll just do this. Here's the solution for it. Check your steps real quick. I mean, the best way to check this is to make sure eventually you should have gotten this. That's the first place you check without having to waste too much time. So did everybody get this? Whoa. If you did... I, I, I got to the one right before it. How did you get to the next one? Divide by y so that your y goes underneath dy. And then divide by this coefficient so that the other term has all these. <laughs> so I'm multiplying by 1 over y and 1 over 3 to the 4 v, or 3 v to the 4 plus 1. Does that make sense? If you got to this point, I mean at that point it's just calc 1. Can you integrate that? Can you integrate this? This, um, the denominator you can treat as u, so then the numerator would be like 1 sixth u. Yes, I did. I didn't write the sign here, no, but that's what I'm doing. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Don't worry.